Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to do is actually take this project and save it. I'll click the Save button here. Um, and we want to deploy it to our connected device. Uh, in this case, we are connected to a device, but it's actually um, an emulator that allows you to emulate a, a physical device as an application that runs on your PC. And this is just tremendously useful if you're doing demonstrations, um, in certain cases doing development, or in this case doing a webinar. Uh, I, ca I can deploy and use a piece of software that acts like an emulator, or I'm sorry, acts like a device in an emulated type environment. And you can see that we just deployed, uh, so what I'm going to do is open up our emulator. And you can see uh, in this case we have a skin set up for a Motorola MC55, uh, so some of the keystrokes and all that, uh, all that kind of visual stuff is, is similar to what the MC55 looks like. So at this point, if this were a connected device, it would be a very similar effect. We would click uh, the Start menu to start Trish Plus, select Trish Plus, and at the minimum what we should see is our launcher screen and a data entry tab with our two um, sessions that we created, our asset scans and our asset master. Uh, in this case, uh, we would want to go in to do our asset scans to collect our data, and we should see that our form looks very similar to what we you know, hastily defined over here. Uh, before I do that, I do want to verify and see if we actually have any asset master data in here. And the way I could do that is by going into my view data. Uh, so here you can see we have minimal data. Uh, we can actually transfer some over. Um, via any of our data uh, transfer tools. In this case, I'll use ODBC Link. So let's go ahead and just delete this for the moment. And then before we leave here, I'll, I'll just show you the form really quickly. All right, so just click the house icon to go back to the launcher screen. And I want to collect data. Of course, I, like I said, I don't have any data in my asset master just yet, but I'll at least show you the form. So here's the form. Uh, if I were to scan an asset here, A001, you can see that the description comes up with our custom not found message. Uh, similar to current location, of course I've, I've shrunken it down a bit, uh, but you can see that that is the string that um, we had previously set. And, and there's your time date stamp, which looks to me like it could be widened a little bit. Um, so we can jump back real quick to our form designer. Just widen these guys out a little bit. Um, and that's it, and we can actually deploy right now. And in the meantime, while that's deploying, I can start our ODBC link application and show you how that um, can transfer the data over. Uh, for the initial stage, of course, we don't have any scanned data or, or audited data because we haven't gone out and done our quarterly audit yet. We're still prepping the device to load with our, with our master list of items. Um, so I have a pre-set up uh, database, just a simple access database with two tables, one for our pending audit asset scans, which is empty, and one with our list of uh, asset items that we expect in our corporate environment. And here they are uh, with simple asset tags. Typically the only requirement for an asset ID is um, that it be unique. So when I scan A001, I know that there's only going to be one entrance to uh, the Dell Inspiron. Uh, so this is just a uh, sort of a data viewer provided with ODBC Link, but the data is actually residing in whatever your, your database is. In this case, it's Access, but it could be SQL Server, um, it could be um, Oracle, it could be Access, it could be a, any ODBC compliant database. Um, so here in ODBC Link, just quickly, uh, this has been a topic of a previous webinar, but just to review. We have certain sessions configured here, and these are intended to marry up to the sessions we created in our desktop project. Um, and you can see that these two configuration sessions match in a similar way to what we defined in uh, desktop. So we have, uh, for the asset scans, we have our asset ID, the description location, and our audited scan date. And these records would come back to this table and typically be processed and and brought into your, um, let's say, your enterprise level uh, asset tracking system. And we, and we hook into a lot of those systems. Um, likewise, you're, uh, it, you'll notice that the asset scans are actually set to sync from device only because the data coming, in, th in this case, is only coming in the direction from the device where it's relevant. Uh, we're never going to be pushing data to this session. We're just going to be pulling from it. Um, 
Alternatively, our asset master table is um, going to be sending data from our system to the device. And this is what we're using to do our lookup. So again, you can see we have asset ID, uh, description, current location, and last scanned, which we put in there. And you know, again, I'm not sure if we'll end up using it. Uh, and that's it. So we have our configuration. Typically, this is just done once, and then you, you kind of set it and forget it, as they say. Um, let's just take one quick look at our data viewer. I thought I had seen a duplicate in there. Um, because this is an access database, we don't have any rules set up on uniqueness here. So I can see that we have two A0, A022. So I'm just going to change this real quick to be A023 just to eliminate any confusion. Uh, so the next step for us is to synchronize. And this is, this is the process within ODBC Link that's, that's used on a more daily or, or multiple times a day type basis, you know, where you're synchronizing data back and forth. Uh, we do know that we have no asset scan, so I'm not even going to bother synchronizing that. In this case, I'll just send over our asset master data. These are individually synchronizable, or you can select sync all from the top. And you can see our progress was that it sent seven records over. Uh, this tends to be a relatively quick process. So if your asset master table contains 10,000, 20,000, you know, even up to 150,000 or so uh, records, the process is, is generally pretty fast. Uh, so that's it for the moment for ODBC Link. And again, I didn't want to focus too much on that uh, because that was, that was done in a previous webinar. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to our device and start Tracer Plus. And we do want to make sure uh, that we did transfer that data, maybe just a sanity check, if you will. Uh, and here you can see, here are my records, uh, various incarnations of A0, 01, 002, et cetera, with different descriptions. So as we, um, as we scan these fields in our, in our audit session, we'll see the description and the current locations come up as appropriate. So uh, now is just as good a time as any, I suppose, to uh, go ahead and do that. You should notice those form changes we made, too. Um, uh, before we do that, actually, let's delete our, our existing data. And again, these are transaction records. Uh, so deleting these on the device is on, on the assumption, of course, they've been processed on your, on your PC side. So we're going to data entry here, and let's go into asset scans. You can see your record count is zero. You haven't done any scans yet, uh, mainly because I just deleted them. But uh, you can also see that the widening of the current location that I uh, just redeployed and also the widening of the scan date, um, both were transferred over. Uh, so in this case, I don't have a very good memory, so I don't remember which tags were in there, but I do remember that A001 was in there. Um, and when I scan this and press Enter, um, only because I'm emulating a scanning environment, if I were barcode scanning, as soon as I did the scan, this, this lookup would populate. Um, it would follow the rules of the lookup, which said to look into the asset master and bring back the uh, description and also the current location. And you notice that I made this read-only. Uh, this tells the user that, hey, you can't edit this. This is just a reference-only type field. Um, you know, it should be obvious that they, it's read-only and they can't edit it. Whereas the location, um, when you do the lookup, it's going to present what it thinks the location is. And you can obviously modify that and say, well, I'm not in 302. I'm in cubicle 304. Um, and when you do that and you submit this record, you now have a transaction of a changed location. But your master table has not been updated. And that's something I'm going to circle back to in the secondary uh, changes with the update source. Um, but for the moment, let's submit this transaction. And we have a transaction. Let's try A002. Uh, and we see that that's a gateway P4. And I'm not going to change too much on that. I'm going to say sure. Uh, one thing we're going to notice is that both of these are going to be marked as touched because their scan date was previously empty and now has been populated. Um, and just for fun, I'll let's put in a, an asset that we, uh, doesn't exist. Um, in an audit trail environment, this might be useful if you have, I don't know, you're in somebody's cubicle and you uh, scan a PC and it comes up with no information. You may want to submit that and say, um, you know, found in cube 12. So this way, when they, when they see this transaction record coming over, they could say, hey, we have a, a renegade asset out there. Let's go out to cube 12 and find out what the deal is. Why is it not in our system? And get the error corrected. Uh, so let's go ahead and submit that one also. So here we have three, three records that we just collected. Um, typically, this would go on for hundreds of records or so. Um, and you'd come back, and you'd actually transfer those to, uh, to your waiting database.